Okay, so I think, of course, big question a lot of people have for you is just why, why governor? Why do you want to run for governor? Well, our system is broken. I have a, our government is broken, and I, I got a vision for a strong economy, great schools, and safe communities. The straw that broke the camel's back was uh, Kai Kahele is a good buddy of mine, and you know I saw all the uh, pandemic starting, all the businesses closing, all the kids being hurt, and and me and him were talking, and he he was supporting this bill that would make you have to have a vaccine passport to get on the plane to fly in and out. And I talked to him. I said, Hey, why are you doing that, man? Some of us are vaccinated, some of us aren't. You're gonna you're gonna separate all the families. And he and he goes, and I go, What happens if this passes? And he goes, You're just gonna have to listen. And those words right there, I thought about it and I was like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. And we just kept, you know, a day or two went by and I said, you know what, that's enough. I walked down to my mom's house. I said, hey, I'm gonna run for governor. Let's do this. I can't take it anymore. I volunteer, I volunteer for this job. Let's go. Is, you know, we're looking at some of the other people on both, for both parties that are running for governor. We're looking at people who would be considered career politicians or people, you know, you kind of expect might do this. Yeah. You, of course, are not a career politician, mm -hmm. but you, we all know you from your time in the ring and what you've done with, you know, UFC and all mm -hmm. these gyms. Is let's talk about your skills that you've learned in the ring and doing that part of everything. Mm -hmm. How will that transfer to you being an effective governor? Uh, yeah, it, it's for sure I'm not a career politician, and if you want something different, don't vote for a career politician. But my whole life, I've built teams. I've built, like in mixed martial arts, I got a jiu-jitsu guy, a boxing coach, a wrestling coach, a nutritionist, and built all these guys, and I compete on world levels with, with the team that I built. And same thing with business. I've been, uh, first gym I opened was in 1998, and you see my gyms around town now. I mean, you know, we got, we, we're businessmen and business family, and we have many employees, and. You know, that's that's what we do. Is, um, you know, when we're looking at going back to you, like actually fighting in the ring, you know, a lot of people joke around about, about that now in terms of, oh, BJ Penn just wants to go and like, he'll handle everything in the ring, but of course you can't handle mm -hmm. problems on the state level in that way. Mm -hmm. So how would you go, you know, about doing that? Is there anything you maybe learned in the ring where, you know, you're taking on opponents that might help you along in this process. You know what? I am a fighter. My whole life is fighting, but I want all of the people out there to know in Hawaii and all of the children to know that it's not here. It's here. Everything is right here. I became a world champ with this, not with this. So, you know, I I just want to you know, I just want to say to everybody that, you know, you just we're going to put together a team and you know, I know we can't fight them like this, but eh, hey, I'm gonna stand up and I'm gonna fight for you. I might not like what somebody has to say, but I'll fight for them to say it. If you know, right? It, that's what freedom of speech is, and that's why I'm here. I'm here to represent. My ears look like this from listening. That's how I got these. <laughs> listening to Hawaii. I <laughs> love it. And you talking there about building teams and how you've done that to be successful in your career thus far. Is it who would you look to bring on, um, you know, to your cabinet to help you accomplish what you'd like to accomplish? Yeah, so I do have a team. I have a core team of people. But besides that, I definitely look to the other candidates who are in the race. I have great rapport with a lot of them. And, you know, these are the people. They put their hat in the ring. I respect them right off the bat. If there's any, any place anyone can sit, Heidi, you know, uh, Paul Morgan, any of them, please come in. We'll all work together. I respect you guys for putting your hat in the ring. And me being in the ring my whole life, I really respect someone who steps up. As, um, I've interviewed a couple of the other Republican candidates, and we've also spoken with the Republican Party chair um, here at KITV over mm -hmm. the last few months. And I know a big thing for the Republican Party has been trying to get more people just to run. Mm -hmm. um, we have seven, I think more than, maybe more than seven people mm -hmm. running for governor for mm -hmm. the Republican Party. Um, is what made you want to run as a Republican and also like 
you know, for these other people who are running for a party that's not the, the, the democracy. majority. Yeah, you know, it, it was a tough decision. To, uh, am I going to run Republican or Democrat? You know, you can imagine from both sides, I was hearing it the whole time. And you know what? It's just this one party system. I said it last night, 47 of 51 House members are Democrat, 24 of 25 Senate, and then we go down the line, governor, lieutenant governor, congressmen and senators and everything. So, you know, it's, it's time for a way to have a two party system. And, and I believe I bring that to the table. I, I resonate past the politics. Republicans and Democrats, they all go buy poke and beer and watch me fight, or they all go to the gym, you know. This, this isn't my hobby. I don't do this stuff for fun. I'm standing up and I'm volunteering for free because I'm concerned. This is very concerning. Concern for my kids and concern for all of our kids. And I always say it. I, I don't want to have them grow up one day and say, Uncle, Uncle BJ, why didn't you fight for us? You fought in the octagon for 20 years. Why didn't you come fight for us? And this is a fight worth, worth, uh, worth living for. So I'm ready. Because if you to be elected the next governor of Hawaii, what would you like to accomplish? Or what would be your plan for, let's say, your first 90 days in office? I, what I really look for is to make us as sustainable as possible. Make us, make us start having some income. We want to build our surplus up, and we want to take care of the children. We want to take care of the jobs. I mean, we can go down the list. It's the cost of living. It's the housing. It's the children, all of our, our biggest export is our kids flying away to go work in other places and breaks all of our, we have, we've all had best friends, cousins, and everybody move away. And you know, it's, it's time to do something. You know how many people want to move home back to Hawaii? And that's, this, is why I'm, this is why I'm here, fighting for this. And so let's talk about that. Like a lot of locals, they're leaving. How do we keep locals local? I know one thing a lot of people are talking about, more affordable housing. Mm -hmm. What's your plan to try and create more of that? Well, we talked about it last night and a lot of it is with the land use and the zoning and you know, you, you got an, agri an agricultural zoning lot of 20 acres that you can build two houses on or you could build over a hundred houses on those 20 acres. And, you know, and you just see the different things down the line and uh, you know, it, it always is going to come back to affordable housing for who? Who is this affordable for? So there's a lot of things, and we have to give incentives on local ownership, local business, local jobs, and, and uh, we have to, you know, we just, we, we can't stop. We can't stop the fight for, for our, our families leaving, you know, and, and we're here. We're going to do everything we possibly can, uh, you know. <laughs> As you mentioned, you know, a lot of kids who are leaving for whatever the reasons might be. Um, I know a big thing for some of my friends, for myself at one point, at one, you know, and some of my family members, like, jobs just aren't paying mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. what you can make away. Yes. So how do we and the affordable. tackle that? You know, um, we're, we are in a, we're in a big, we're in big trouble because they want to raise the minimum wage. At the same time, this will hurt the, the small businesses staffing and it could crush the small business. And at the same time, the minimum wage, the money he's making, he won't be able to pay his mortgage and, and do his thing. So it's almost, you know, we gotta come in, clean out the corruption and we gotta get sustainable. We gotta, we gotta bring down our costs by, you know, being sustainable on the food and, uh, you know, getting more resources and you know, having our people, yeah, get out there. I mean, we, we got a lot of work to do, but number one is cleaning up the corruption. That's number one. As let's, let's talk about corruption. We've had a lot of things pop up with, within our state government, with elected officials, just within these last few months. Um, when you found out, you know, bribery charges, things like that popping up, what, what was going through your head? I, of course I knew. Of course I knew all that kind of stuff was happening. When, when we do business and we go to get a building permit, it takes over a year. And, you know, what is that for? So people can bribe you to do it quicker? I mean, there's just so many things going on with, with, our, with our government that, you know, and that's, that's why I'm running. I'm, I don't know these people. I'm not connected to none of them. 
and I'm gonna win the general election. And you know, people talk about my experience, but you know, I'm I've got a lot of a lot of experience in business. I got a lot of experience in negotiating. I got a lot of experience in competing at very high levels. And you know, it's it's yeah, it's I can't be bullied and I can't be bought. And that's what these guys are gonna figure out quick. Is, how, how do we flush out corruption? Because I'd like to think that most of these people, you know, they've gone into it for the right reasons, right? They're wanting to improve the community and then, you know, they go in there with the best intentions and then something happens where, yeah, they get bribed or something like that happens. How do we flush that out? How do we get rid of that system? Well, I think it's just political entrepreneurs. I mean, when, when I give, when I'm talking uh, with all the other candidates, I want to stand up there and say, hey, if anybody here is running for office just to screw over the people, leave now, you know? You want to do something, but how do you get rid of it? It's not, what it is is, it's not for the politicians to know, it's not for me to know what's going on, it's for the people to know. It's for them to educate themselves and always vote in people who actually have their interest at heart, you know? All we ever wanted was someone for the people, not for themselves. That's all we ever wanted, that's simple. And that's why we're here now, because you don't feel like we've had that yet. We all know we don't have that, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Um, as you also talked about, you know, we have to diversify a little bit. And how mm -hmm. are we going to do that to bring more affordable housing, bring these locals, you know, back yeah. home? Um, tourism, we're very reliant on tourism. Mm -hmm. how, how do we diversify the economy? Uh, I definitely want to diversify the economy and, you know, um, in the food sustainability and start exporting stuff. Our, our planes come in full and they leave empty. I want to uh, look at that. I definitely want to, we always got to keep the tourism going, see if we can get, get uh, more people involved into, into the tourism. But, you know, everything from tech industry to crypto to all of these things. And us as Hawaiians over here, us as people from Hawaii over here, we're starting to realize that, you know, we only have so many resources and we got to get money from the outside. And that's why you see these people getting into the crypto and, and all these different things. But it would, that's definitely something I'm going to push for. Uh, I'll, I'll push for the, the no interest loans, tax, uh, tax breaks and grants for the, the local farmers and do different things. But I definitely want to look at them look give an option for crypto or tech and these type of industries for our kids maybe some of them want to sit in an air conditioner and you know make some money so we got to think about everybody um i did a hot topic issue this election season has been legalizing marijuana do you think that is an option for diversifying the economy is that something you would support or are you against legalizing recreational marijuana I, I definitely think legalizing marijuana will help the economy. We, we can do hemp with that. We can do with the tourism that can help and people can get their, their, medical, well, their medical benefits for whatever they need. So I, I do see some strength in that. And yes, a huge part is, is for the economy. That would be a big part of it. Is if we were to legalize recreational marijuana, um, do you have an idea of how would want that to play out. I mean, we see it playing out in different states in different mm -hmm. ways. I don't know if you've looked into, you know, a Denver versus in Illinois, what mm -hmm. maybe would benefit us better? Um, I haven't looked at Denver and Illinois and stuff, but I definitely I would make it 21 and over. And, uh, you know, I treat it like alcohol. No, uh, no public drinking walking down the road and the same thing for that. And, you know, and just do it do everything properly as as we all expect it should be if we were to as you know legalize marijuana recreational marijuana start bringing some money in that way is there anywhere any um, places in particular you'd want that those funds to go to to try and boost yeah i, I definitely would want to make it all transparent you know for whatever you know we can put it to the kids we can put it to the roads, you know, what, whatever we need, whatever we need and make it completely transparent. Another hot topic issue, of course, lately has been Roe v. Wade. Mm -hmm. um, would you, right now, of course, Hawaii's laws are in place where mm -hmm. this most recent decision yeah. in the Supreme Court, 
wouldn't be changing anything for us, mm -hmm. but would you move to maybe change those laws? No, uh, the the everything is on the legislature you know we always talk about bj what laws can you change everybody knows i can't do anything in the legislature you know it all lies with them and it's funny that we this this mix up happens with this with this one question but it is it's all on the legislature but i do welcome the power that that the that the state got that the state any more power that we can get i always welcome it but yeah this is a problem for the legislature and it's like any other problem me dealing with them so you know, that's just, that's where we are. Where do you stand on Roe v. Wade? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm for life. I believe everybody's for life. We all, we all want to see people do good. And with that said, I'm here to listen to the people. I'm here to represent the people. So, you know, in that sense, it doesn't matter what I think. It's what the people think. And also another Supreme Court. Um, Thing that's been a hot topic lately. Mm -hmm. um, they rolled in New York for more people to get permits for concealed carry guns. Mm -hmm. um, should Hawaii move more in that direction? Yeah, I, I heard about that in the Supreme Court or whatever, and and I'm 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 pro Second Amendment, and if it comes to protecting anybody, because I know these things that were happening in the mainland and stuff. You know, if people want to talk to me, what about the kids and this and that, I'll, I'll take all my direction from the law enforcement and I'll talk to them and ask them what has worked and what hasn't worked and, you know, I'll go to them. Uh, we have a lot of experts around in, in, our, um, in our government and I, I trust them. You've mentioned kids a few times in our conversation, mm -hmm. schools. What do you think we need to do to improve our education system here in Hawaii? Well, first thing we got to do is take care of the teachers, right? All of our teachers are starting to leave. Um, we got to, man, we just, we got to get the kids inspired. We got to get them into it. You know, we, we got to get teachers that, you know, want to, want to, want to work with the kids and, and they all, you know, they, they, they're all, it's the environment. The environment is the whole thing. I mean, you see these different videos, the teacher passes out a paper and a kid's like, I don't want to learn like this on just a paper. I want to learn from you. You're the teacher. Let's go, you know, and, you know, there, there is a lot of work to be done. Since I was in high school, we were always at dead last and, and uh, you know, we, it's time to make a move. It's time to make a move on this. And we have a lot of experts that know what to do and we just, we got to make sure we support them and get them up there. Of course, it's on the Board of Education to bring in some teachers and attract those teachers, but what do you think we should do to try and attract teachers that want to inspire? We, well, we have to make more teachers here. We have to bring in other teachers in and, you know, I mean, I don't know if, you know, people know why they want to be a teacher, you know? I mean, no one's gonna, I mean, you could ask me like, hey, what, what's gonna inspire you to be a good fighter? How are you gonna be inspired and want to do good? But I believe that there is people out there, you know, that want to do good. And what you do every day is what you become. And, you know, that they teach every day. And, you know, it's, it's got to be in them. It's got to be in their heart. And we should really keep an eye on that and, and weed out, you know, uh, teachers that aren't helping the children. And there's a, a question we asked um, to all the Republican candidates at the debate we held. Um, what would you do to Hawaii's justice system to make sure we hold criminals accountable for their actions? We, sh um, we should, the governor gets to choose the sheriff who gets in. We should make that electable so the people can elect him so he can get rid of all of the corruption in our government. Everybody, it doesn't make any sense. How would I be held accountable if I'm the governor and I elect the guy who's the sheriff who's supposed to check on me? That doesn't make sense to any of us. But these little different things, it, and, you know, and these things got to change. Are there other positions um, as within the people that you will be, that the governor appoints that mm -hmm. you would like to make an elected position other than sheriff? Um, what, what, what other ones are off the top of my head? What other ones are they, they appoint? 
What, what, yeah, what other yeah, one? So, you know, as positions that you typically would apply. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, all, all the departments or whatever. Would you rather, are there other positions that you would prefer? You to know let what? The people choose. The one at this time sticks out in my head is because we were talking about the corruption is the sheriff. That is the one. But all of the other heads of the department, we are going to go in and we're going to look at them all. And we're not going to fire all of you, but you will have to reapply. <laughs> <laughs> That's where we are with this guy, with this crap. <laughs> um, and then, of course, tourism. You know, mm -hmm. talked about it a little bit already. A lot of people have been concerned about over tourism. Mm -hmm. And I think we kind of saw a little bit with the pandemic, of course, forcing everyone to shut down and we're not having any tourists come in. But mm -hmm. now people are realizing maybe there's a different way to do this. Mm -hmm. um, do you see ways we could, you know, maybe alleviate some over tourism or find ways to accommodate um, all those tourists better? I think, I mean, we all definitely want less tourists paying a little more, right? We wanted more of an exclusive vacation. Um, for me, you know, growing up in Hawaii, I'm used to tourism. I've always had tourism. My big thing is diversifying, you know? I'm, I'm not about developing, developing everything, but you know, the tourism comes in, it gives our people jobs, and it really does wonders for places like the Big Island. Place like Hilo, we got no tourism, you know? We need things like this, and uh, you know, we, we, we'll focus on it, but we gotta diversify and give everybody else, you know, then, then we won't need the tourism as much because we got other things going on, but, but as of now, you know, in, in Outer Island, like the island that I live on, you're gonna take our tourism away. That's not good. And as my first question for you, you brought up how the pandemic is pretty much what inspired you to be sitting here mm -hmm. with me now um, as we continue to try and emerge from the pandemic. Mm -hmm. What do you think we need to do to have our businesses recover? Um, have our students maybe catch up on some learning loss? How do we continue to move in a positive direction after these last two and a half years? After this last two and a half years to fix our businesses and to fix the damage that's been done to our children, the first thing we have to do is get out all of these people. You cannot elect someone who is on the side that wants to shut this whole place down. What's the first thing to keep the economy good? Don't shut it down. Leave it open. It was fine until we shut it down. And we really have to look. I, I'm really worried for the people because all these people who are bought and paid off, you see Green and Kai yelling at each other, you're paid off more, you're paid off more, you're paid off more. Hey, both of you guys are paid off. Get out of here, both of you guys. We need to concentrate on our children and we need to concentrate on Hawaii. We don't need to concentrate on political entrepreneurs. And, you know, I just, I just get so burned out about that. I think the big thing we've all talked about through the pandemic and now is like we're seeing more and more businesses, you know, we thought maybe they were going to survive. Um, and now as they're coming out and prices are going up and mm -hmm. other things, and they're, we're seeing more Staffing shortage, how right? Do, how do we try to help them? Um, you just, we, we got to get something going. We got to get our workers going again. And uh, we got to, you know what happens is the houses are so expensive here. So there's a couple generations living in a house. And then the government starts giving everybody unemployment. And, and then it's hard to go back to a small business because you want to go get the benefits from the big business and our small businesses are suffering. I walk into the businesses in Hilo and the people are crying and, and they're so worried and they're so scared. And you know, they, it all starts with the leadership. All of these problems, the housing, the, the financial, the expense, um, every problem we have is all because of the corruption of the government. That's the whole thing they're going to say all these policies, oh, let's build all these houses and, and this and that. I want to say, everybody, that's when the corruption will start. That's when you got to keep an eye. As soon as they go to make their move and as soon as they go to build their thing, that's when the, all the, the corruption is going to start. And 
We've seen it many times with uh, different projects that we have around here, and our, our government is broken, and so is our economy from that same reason. And you know how we gotta switch that. We gotta get rid of these guys. Anything I didn't ask you that you'd like to share with our viewers, with voters? No, I just wanna, just wanna let everybody know that it's true when I say all we ever wanted was somebody for the people and not for themselves. And that's exactly why I'm here. And I'm the one that can get elected in the Republican Party. None of these other people can get, can get elected. I resonate beyond the politics. I've been to your neighborhoods. I've laughed with you. I've cried with you. I trust you, and I hope you trust me. Thank you.